Okay, hello, good morning everyone. So I am Janine Sabadayus and today I am going to analyze a poem entitled The Cry of My Heart by Claire Therese Binaloga. So let me read the poem first. The Cry of My Heart I never thought of the world taking you, taking you far away from us again. Life is so brilliant that it prepared me, prepared me for something big like a storm. You left us with nothing but a blank gaze. The eyes, once a galaxy on its own, are now filled with emptiness and darkness. And the heart, that once beat with excitement, now beats in silence, just trying to live. You were so cruel that you held on for long, waiting and suffering just for me to leave. Soon after I left that room, he rested. My heart cries for you have lived so shortly. Thanks, my dear, for that little forever. Okay, and that this is the poem by Claire Therese Binaloga entitled The Cry of My Heart. Okay, let us analyze first the speaker of the poem. So the speaker is the author herself. As you can see, it uses the words I, me, and my. And then the addressee is the person who died. And then the tone of the poem is sad and mournful because it's about losing someone. And then the diction that is used is simple and poetic. It does not use a lot of complicated words. So, and the theme is the pain of losing someone. And then this type of poem is considered as a modern or contemporary sonnet because it has 14 lines and it is written in iambic pentameter. So the reason why it is considered a modern or contemporary sonnet is because it does not adhere to the rules, form, and structure of traditional sonnets like Shakespearean and Italian, etc. So, walay shagi follow a rhyme scheme. So, that what makes it a modern or contemporary sonnet. Okay? And now, for the punctuation in the poem. So, we have, we can find and stop rhyme, I mean, and stop line, run on line or enjambment, and cesura. For the end stop line, we have line 1 to 5, and then line 7 to 8, line 11, line 13, and 14. As you can see, um, it is colored in violet or purple. So that is the end stop line because the punctuation is at the end of the line. Okay? And then for run on line or enjambment, we have line 10. So, line 10, you are so cruel that you held on for long. So as you can see, there is no punctuation there. So that is called, that is considered an enjambment. And then cesura. So for cesura, we have line 6, line 9, and line 12. So as you can see, the punctuation in line 6 is in the middle of the line. So the eyes and comma wants a galaxy on its own. So that is considered cesura. Okay. And now let's go to the imagery that is used in the poem. Now we can find three types of imagery in the poem. We have visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So for visual, we have here, the eyes, once a galaxy on its own, are now filled with emptiness and darkness, okay? And then prepared me for something big like a storm, big like a storm, so it's visual. And then you left us with nothing but a blank gaze, that is also visual. And an auditory. And the heart that once beat with excitement now beats in silence, just trying to live. So it gives us a beating sound, a beating sound of the heart. So that is considered the auditory imagery. And for kinesthetic or movement, 
we have here, you were so cruel that you held on for long, waiting and suffering just for me to live. So there is a movement there in the words waiting and suffering. So that is kinesthetic. And then another line we have, soon after I left that room, you rested. So I left that room. So there's movements. So that's kinesthetic imagery. Okay. And now we have the figures of speech that is used in the poem. So we have simile, personification, anadiplosis, and euphemism. Okay. And more for the next slides. Okay. For this, for simile, we have here the line prepared me for something big like a storm. So there is a comparison here with the use of the word like. So undoubtedly, this is considered simile. And then personification. We have and the heart that once beat with excitement you now beats in silence, just trying to live. So when I say personification, it gives human attributes to non-human things. So heart, heart is an organ, and it is associate, associated with human attribute, which is excitement and silence. So that's what makes it personification. And the next line we have. My heart cries for you have lived so shortly. So crying is a human behavior, right? So it is associated with heart, which is an organ. So clearly it is personification. And then we have here, life is so brilliant. So brilliant, it is human attribute. And life is abstract, right? So that what makes it a personification and then next we have anadiplosis so when we say anadiplosis it is when the last word or phrase of a line is repeated at the beginning of the next line so we have here the line i never thought of the world taking you taking you far away from us again so, ang last word sa kaning line is repeated at the beginning of the next line. So, kaning word, taking you. Taking you, nasa kinaiwitan nga line, and then he, for the next line, ano siya beginning. Okay? And we have another line, nga anadiplosis gyapon. Life is so brilliant that it prepared me. Prepared me for something big like a storm. So, ano siya anadiplosis gyapon. And then we have euphemism. So when we say euphemism, it is an appropriate expression used in the place of a phrase or words that may be found inappropriate or a bit offensive. So instead of saying you died, ang gigamit sa author is you rested. Okay? That is euphemism. And the next, we have oxymoron. Oxymoron, when we say oxymoron, it is a combination of words with contrasting definitions. So we have here the line, Thanks, my dear, for that little forever. So little forever. So that is contrasting, right? Little, it is synonymous with short. Diba? And then forever, synonymous with long. So it is contrasting ideas. Okay, contrasting words that is put together, little forever. So that is oxymoron. And then assonance. Assonance, the repetition of vowel sound. So we have here the repetition of the O sound. I never thought of the world taking you. Then another, we have taking you far away from us again. Then life is so brilliant that it prepared me. Okay, that is assonance. And then the tone again is sorrow, grief, sad, melancholic. And then for the symbolism, symbolism we have storm, eyes, heart, life, world, and little forever. So little forever, it's it symbolizes, represents happy memories in a short while. That is that weighs so much, you no know, happy memories. And then storm, 
this symbol represents a big problem or obstacle. And then eyes represents life. And then heart represents emotions or feelings. And then life represents experiences. Okay? Now, this poem... This poem it brings us the process of moving on and letting go of the death of our loved ones. In the few parts of the poem, the author was in denial. No, it's unbelievable how life can disappear so quickly. But the author is still thankful that she was quite prepared for it. She's she's like she's expecting it to happen, diba? However, it wasn't easy at all. Then she proceeds in talking about what she feels. She talks about how painful it is to lose someone you dearly love. And this is like the pinnacle of the poem, where the author pours her heart, her pain, through words. And in this line, uh, we can sense a bit of hatred here because of the fact that he loved, her loved one waited for her to leave the room before she allowed herself to finally rest. Diba? And it ended with the author expressing her love and gratefulness towards Adresse. She was thankful for the times they spent together and she referred to it as little forever. So the poetic vision of this poem that is that it's not easy to lose someone. So we undergo processes like sorrow, a denial, then acceptance. The poem tells us that life is short and unpredictable. We never really know when a person dies. So we should treasure our moments with our loved ones and spend time with our family as much as we could. And yes, that's it for this poem entitled The Cry of My Heart. And I hope that you enjoy the analysis. Once again, this is Janisa Badayas. Thank you so much for listening.